So this song uses a capo on the second fret, and that means that I'll be talking about the chords as if there was no capo. Uh, really this is in the key of B, because if there wasn't a capo, again, you'd have a B chord right there, but this is actually, we're going to talk about this as if it were an A chord. So the chords you really need to know, again, are A, this form of D, which is just these two notes added on to the A, what is essentially an E. which is essentially the same chord E, but with the, um, what is essentially a, an F sharp bass, if this were no capo, right, F sharp on top of an E. There it is. D. Sorry. And that is a, it's a really like a, an open A form uh, with um, a, what is a B, Remember, thinking no capo, a B note on top of these two notes, which are the higher higher parts of that A chord. It's like a B minor chord, a shortened B minor chord. Again, these are all chord forms that uh, James Taylor uses quite a bit. D, this B minor. Back to E. These are intervals of thirds that are past an octave. Here's the octave. But here's the third, I believe. So these are on the E string, the bottom E string, and then on the uh, G string. separating these notes again. So you gotta get these fingerings and you also have to get the, the picking and this is what takes takes the, the most work and the most practice. But um, you just gotta you just gotta hang in there and, and go at it. I'm gonna do it again. Second verse. Now that timing right there, um, I don't think I've ever gotten that right. It's always sounded a little, a little odd to me. So uh, a lot of times, if I'm just playing this thing, I will, I'll give it a pause and a more natural pause. And let's say I'm coming off that that first verse. I'll do. It sounds more natural to me. But if you listen to the recording. Uh, James Taylor uh, t kind of skips it. He, he, he kind of he kind of jumps it, which makes it kind of interesting. But um... all right. So. Does these hammer-ons and they're not that easy because you got to get a lot of definition but again if you practice uh, that should be one of the last things you get to you can articulate it like but he does so on the bridge you've got um, this chord which is a bit of a stretch because you've got two frets in between so it 
it's a, it's a bar across here and you're, you're hitting the, um, the low E on the second fret and you're hitting the G string on the second fret, which gives you this octave. So. That's just the open E and B down here and then the low string. And then this. Or seven. But it's these two notes on the D and G, uh, sorry, the D, yeah, D and G strings and the low E right here. But I'm fingering it like this, this, because I need to get to here. So that's just my thing. You might want to do it differently. I'm grabbing that one like this. And this is, um, you can see where the low E is here. And this is these two strings here again on the, on the D and the G. Uh, this fifth uh, interval. So it's um, and then that's an A. That's just the A chord. So again, the chords are simple: A, D to the E. But it's the fingering, the right and left, that makes it. Complicated. Pull offs, hammer ons. Then it goes. just like the beginning um, and again you know I threw on my own little ending